One way that mixtures can be classified is based on the size of their particles. The particles are typically measured in nanometers. So as we proceed this direction, the particle size will be increasing. We're going to look at solutions, colloids, and suspensions. Solutions have the smallest particles, colloids have intermediate sized particles, and suspensions have the largest particles. Now it's not important that you remember these numbers, I just wanted to um, show them to you so you'd get just a general idea. Now if we have a solution, the particles do not settle out. You know this, like if we had um, a glass of salt water, like from the ocean, if you put it on your kitchen counter and you came back the next day, you would not see the salt at the bottom and the water at the top. That just doesn't happen. In a colloid, the particles are bigger, but they also do not settle out. And in, in a suspension, oh, and some examples are milk and blood. In a suspension, the particles are so big that they do settle out. In fact, if we had a funnel and some filter paper, we could probably catch the suspended particles on the filter paper. So some examples would be like sand and water kind of mixed together. Eventually the sand would fall to the bottom of the beaker. Now here's a new term called the Tyndale effect. We're going to explore it here in the next few minutes. But a solution has a negative Tyndale effect. A colloid has a positive Tyndale effect. And a suspension has a positive Tyndale effect. We'll come back to that. Here's some example of colloids. Like we saw in the previous slide, milk was an example of a colloid. And these little uh, blobs here, well, these are fat globules. Those things um, will not settle out. Uh, what we have here is blood. Um, this area here, that would be like the watery component of your blood. And of course, these red things are the red blood cells, platelets, those help with blood clotting, and then neutrophils and eosinophils, those are two examples of white blood cells. So you can imagine what would happen if your blood cells all pooled in your feet. That doesn't happen. So a colloid, um, the particles are large, but they don't settle out. All right, let's look at the Tyndale effect. A positive Tyndale effect, um, that can be achieved by shining a light or a laser through a beaker. Now if the light is refracted or scattered by the particles, that means it's a positive Tyndale effect. So particles in the mixture will cause incident light to scatter and the light will easily be seen. A negative Tyndale effect that's when the particles in the mixture do not scatter the incident light and the light will not easily be seen. So just once again, a positive test is when you can see the light and a negative test is when you can't see the light. And the reason why you can or can't see the light is because the particles will scatter the light. Let's take a look. In, in this first one here, Whatever, whatever mixture this is, do you think that is a positive Tyndale effect or negative? Well, I would say it's a negative because you cannot see the light. So in this mixture, there are, are small particles, so small that the particles do not scatter the light. Um, conversely, this is a positive Tyndale effect. Whatever particles are in here are large enough that the light will be scattered. Let's do one more example just for practice. Well, what do you think? It looks like they've poured some type of mixture through a funnel. Maybe they've even separated out some of the solids. So maybe what they poured in here was a suspension. Um, but the suspended particles got caught. So maybe what went through was either a solution or a colloid. Well, my guess would be that it's a solution because you can see the light. That's a positive Tyndale effect. If it was a solution, you would not be able to easily see the light.